welcome everyone tonight to Straight Talk. Glad you could join us. And uh, tonight's edition, we're going to be talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. Uh, basically, that's going to mean we're going to talk about what God does through the Spirit of God in your life as a believer. You know, uh, many Christians, especially young Christians, new Christians, they think that, you know, it'd just be a lot better if Jesus was here on the earth right now. And uh, then I could just talk to him. Well, Jesus was one person, and the disciples were with him all the time on the earth, but everybody wasn't with him all the time. Even though there were times where he sat down and taught uh, multitudes of people, there was times when uh, there was 5,000, 7,000 people that he taught, and then we know about the miracles of the loaves and fishes and things like that happen. But Jesus made a, a kind of a interesting statement that you know sometimes people don't want to hear this just because they don't understand what the Spirit of God is for and and why he came but Jesus said in John's Gospel uh, that in the 16th chapter verse 7 he said that it's better for you talking to the disciples at the time he said it's better for you that I go away because if I don't go away then the comforter or another translation says the helper uh, he cannot come but he said but if I go away then I will send him to you and so you know if you think about this when Jesus departed from the earth after the crucifixion he he was raised from the dead three days later and then he appeared to uh, 500 people in one spot and appeared to the disciples in the upper room and different different people had seen him once he was gone and people had received uh, the gospel message that Jesus paid for their sins and took their place as a sacrifice uh, before Almighty God then their sins were paid for and the debt was satisfied well then the Bible tells us in 1st Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 that the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of us in fact he says don't you know that your body that your spirit is the temple of the living God and the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of you now in John's Gospel uh, Jesus gives us a layout of what the Spirit of God will do in your life and in my life so you want to you want to stay tuned here you want to listen up on this because if you don't know him you need to get to know him if you don't know what he'll do for you I promise you right now you want to listen up on this tonight because you're going to missing out on a lot of things you're missing out huge big time in life in your Christian walk if you don't know what the ministry of the Holy Spirit is in your life today well, let's just look at this. Let's get right into it. And let's talk about uh, what the Holy Spirit does or what his ministry is in our lives today. I want to read from John's Gospel, the 14th chapter in verse 26. It says this. It says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus is speaking, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Then you want to skip over to the 16th chapter and look at verse 13 through 15. Jesus says here, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will tell it to you. And then he said here, Whatever he, whatever he hears, he'll tell it to you and tell what is to come. Then he says here in verse 14, He will glorify me because he will receive from me what is mine and he'll tell it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine and that's why I said, The Spirit will receive from me what is mine and will tell it to you. Now think about this. You know, the disciples had Jesus with them on the earth, but not everybody could be around him all at one time. But you and I as believers today, the Bible tells us that we're the temple of the living God and uh, the Holy Spirit's job or his ministry is to do just what Jesus said. He said that he would take the things 
that were his, that were Jesus, and he would show it to us. In other words, the words, the wisdom, the knowledge, whatever it is that Jesus is wanting to say to you and I today, he's saying it through the Holy Spirit who dwells on the inside of us. Now, um, this is an amazing thing because he says several things that the Spirit of God will do. And tonight we're just going to talk about that there are four things that Jesus said the Holy Spirit would do. And these four things the Holy Spirit will be faithful to do. The, the Holy Spirit on the earth is really um, here like a servant, if you will. The scripture says that he won't speak on his own authority. Another translation says he'll not say of his own initiative, but whatever he hears, that's what he's going to speak. So basically, it's like a re, it's almost, you know, if you will, uh, maybe crude analogy, but it's like a relay system. Jesus is speaking by his spirit to our spirit, who's on the, the, his spirit's on the inside of us, speaking through his spirit to our spirit, and then that comes floating up on the inside of us, and understanding comes to our mind. Now, in the scriptures, it says here, uh, that number one, that Jesus would, uh, by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will do what? He'll teach you all things. John fourteen twenty six. Now he didn't just he wasn't just talking about uh, scriptures. Think about it. There's plenty to go on in life. There's a lot in the Bible. There's a lot of scriptures that address a lot of things. And the Spirit of God will teach you concerning God's word. He'll open the eyes of your understanding as the book the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. He'll enlighten the eyes of your understanding. In other words, cause you to understand the the scripture actually in, in the Greek it says the eyes of your heart. He'll cause you to be enlightened or or to understand what what God is saying in his word. And that is definitely uh one of the most valuable ministry uh aspects of the Holy Spirit because you know, we, we come to the Word of God and it's, it's almost like um, people say, you know, if you really want to strike it rich, if you're panning for gold, uh, you know, everybody could find a few nuggets here and there on the surface. But if you want to strike it rich, you have, to, you have to dig. You have to dig deep. Well, the Spirit of God is the one that will take you beyond what you see on the surface and reveal both the spirit of the message and the understanding the word of the message of, of the scriptures of the Bible. But then there's more than that. The spirit of God will also teach you concerning the things of life, everyday life. And, uh, you know, he, he'll, t he'll teach you about uh, relationships, for instance. He'll teach you things like, uh, I know for my own self, uh, I used to buy cars. I, I think I've had probably 10 or 12 now in my life. And the last probably seven or eight cars, you know, before I'd go here and there and buy a car, usually I'd go to a dealership and I'd pay all kinds of money. And I realized later that, man, I was paying way too much money for these cars. And, and so I just started praying about it. And I started talking to the Lord about it. And he began to speak to me about how to buy a car. <laughs> well, needless to say, I've bought uh, two almost new vehicles uh, just just a couple of years old, three years old, um, and I've bought those for six thousand dollars under the book value. Two of them. Uh, I haven't paid even the blue book value, what they call that. I haven't paid that in the last probably seven or eight vehicles. God taught me how to buy a vehicle, how to save money. <laughs> you know, well, I don't see that in the Scripture uh, where that is, but He said the Holy Spirit He would teach you all things. He said all things. He would teach you concerning the things that concern you in life. So don't get the idea that, you know, God is only interested in me learning his word and things that the Bible has to say, and then that's just it. You know, outside of that, he's, he's on another plane and another realm, and, and we don't talk. No, that's, that's not the God of the Bible. The Bible says, it teaches that, that God made man for... Uh, fellowship, and you can read that in the book of Genesis and see in the first uh, three chapters there, well, second and third chapters where you'll find the information. But uh, God's not interested in just talking to you squarely only about the Bible. Listen, He'll talk to you about anything that concerns your life. He cares about you. The Bible says God is love. 
Well, then secondly, let's talk a little bit more about what the Holy Spirit will do. You know, uh, as we said, the disciples, you know, they were, they were with Jesus. Um, think about this. The scripture in James says that God's no respecter of persons. Now, if the disciples were with Jesus, um, you know, day in and day out, and no doubt personal things came up and they talked about it. They talked about things of life and Jesus sat down and taught a lot of things to these guys. You know, uh, John said, I suppose if everything Jesus did and said was written in books, I don't think the world itself could contain the books. That's quite a statement that John made. So Jesus did a lot of talking, a lot of teaching, a lot of explaining about things, a lot of showing things. And if he did it for the disciples, He's no respecter of persons, then he'll do it for you and I through the Holy Spirit today. And so that's another part of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit's uh, ministry. Then, um, I like this. Uh, the second thing in, in John's Gospel, the 16th chapter, is Jesus said that he would guide you into all truth. You know, uh, if you've ever been to caverns, maybe underground caves with the uh, stalactites and stalagmites or different things like that, uh, usually those places are pretty dark and then they have a little light system and the guide will walk through many times because he just knows the place like the back of his hand. Uh, and they'll flip lights on and they'll take you through, but everyone else going, unless you've been before, you have no idea where you're going, you don't know how to go through them, but that's why they have a guide. And uh, if you're willing to place yourself in the hands of the guide, well, then you can see some amazing things. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible calls, it, calls him a guide. And he's here to guide you not only through God's word and to teach you the things about God's word, but he's here to guide you in life, guide you in the right direction. You know, you can't possibly um, sit down and just learn everything and, you know, 20 years time or even 30 years or even 50 years uh, and and things that happen on the spur of the moment things where you have to make split second decisions and sometimes they're very important maybe things come up and you need to know what do I do and, and I got to do it now well the Spirit of God can guide you into the right decision he can bring truth to you bring understanding and wisdom to you and guide you into uh, making the right decisions guide you to go into the right direction uh, I could sit here and talk all night and then when the Sun comes up I could still be talking about things that the Spirit of God has done for me where he has guided me in the direction that I needed to go I just absolutely didn't know what to do but he would guide me in the right direction uh, he's done it with jobs, he's done it with purchases, he's done it in relationships. I mean, it just goes on and on. And the Spirit of God, uh, you know, it's it's funny, you hear people say that they know Jesus and, you know, um, they believe in Him, but you never hear them say anything about the Holy Spirit. And He's the one, the Bible says, that indwells us. He's the one who is relaying or saying whatever Jesus or the Father says that's what he's saying. And so I, I can have great peace in knowing that there's not anything I'm going to come up against, but what I can talk to him, I can talk it over with the Lord. I mean, I'm talking to the Lord, but I know it's the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. And the scripture we'll get to a little bit later in Romans, it talks about that he'll do what the Bible calls bearing witness. Or in other words, it means to testify that something is true. Uh, when the Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit, uh, there is just a, an agreement. There's a, a on the inside of you, and, and you just know that this is right. And it's very interesting, you know, people that if they didn't know God, they'd say, well, how do you know? Well, it'd be hard to explain to them because they don't have the Spirit of God on the inside of them. But as you, as you spend time with God, you'll begin to learn and recognize how the Spirit of God works with you. And that you'll, you'll know this. I, I walked with God for probably 10 years. And, and then I realized that God uh, was just trying to communicate with me and help me in life all the time all the time and I didn't know I thought you were just supposed to talk to him every once in a while or something I didn't nobody told me anything you know but God wants to talk to you all the time and the Spirit of God's on the inside of you to guide you now 
It's interesting, uh, you know, as I said, the Spirit of God, you know, he's going he's gonna to get involved not just in the Word of God. He's not going to just guide you through the Scriptures, but through every aspect of life. I'll tell you what, he'll guide you in what house to buy. He'll, he'll guide you in whether you should take a job, a certain job or not. He will guide you. He'll show you, and, and maybe uh, I've had times where I've been working on things. I fix a lot of things, do a lot of things myself, and, and I've, had, I've just said, Lord, I absolutely don't know what to do with this. And I would just sit down and take some time to pray, and all of a sudden something would come to me, and it was just like, okay, I'll do that, and it would work. It just amazing how God would, would just speak to me, drop something down in my heart, and give me an answer to fix something that I was struggling with. Give me a way to do it. I, I've done it on jobs over and over and over. You know, ask the Lord, well, how would you do this? Because Proverbs uh, chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your steps or direct your path. And I said, you know, the Bible says to acknowledge Him. That just means, Lord, what do you think about it? So I just talked to Him. Like a friend. He is my God, but he is my very best friend. And I'd say to him, well, what would you do if you were doing this? How would you do this job? How would you do this? And stuff would just come to me. And it's amazing. And I would do it that way. And it'd be so much faster, so much more efficient. The bottom line is I would make more money. And, <laughs> and I saw that God really cares about me. You need to be acquainted with the Holy Spirit. You need to understand that you can tap into this awesome resource that God has left for us, that Jesus said he would send uh, when he departed. The third thing that the Spirit of God does, according to John 16, 13, and again, you know, maybe you want to uh, turn there, but he said, when the Spirit of truth has come, he said, that he would show you things to come. He would show you things to come. Um, that word show, it means to make aware. Uh, sometimes the Lord's shown me things in a dream that were about to come. Uh, other times I would just see myself uh, having a conversation with someone and I, I heard myself say something and then they said something back. And you know, it was just sometimes I've had this happen as early as um, maybe an hour or two and then I ran into this person conversation started and right as I was saying certain things all of a sudden I remembered what I what I had seen earlier it just came up it was almost like watching a little a little mini vision you know watching a little a TV thing you know and I just all of a sudden I just realized I know what they're gonna say and they said exactly what I saw them say. I've had it happen weeks in advance, months in advance, different things like that. God said that the Spirit of God, when He was come, He would show you things to come. He'd show you things about the plan of God for your life, what God wants to do in your life, but He'll also show you about the things that you're dealing with right now, what you're living in, and the, and the issues of life that are going on. And you might be thinking, you know, what should I do here? What should I do there? The, the Scripture says that the Holy Spirit... He will show you. Think about it. Jesus said he'll take the things that are mine and he will show it to you. He'll disclose it to you. He'll make you understand. And that's just an awesome thing uh, to have in life. And I can tell you that uh, I wouldn't want to live a Christian life any other way than that right there. Because without the Holy Spirit, so many times, you know, we can learn a lot of things and people can get some, some wisdom about things here and there, but you're just not going to find everything in life. You're not going to know just how to speak to someone and just how to speak in their life and how to get in there. You know they need help, but you know they're bothered and they're irritated and they're, they got a wall up, you know, and, and, and you don't know how you can say it and your mind's telling you, if I even open my mouth, they're just going to go off. But you know, the Spirit of God knows people inside and out. The Holy Ghost does. Jesus does. And He can show you how to present the thing that you need to say to Him. He can show you how to do it and make it a success. But you know, without Him, you're on your own. I found out a long time ago, 
I don't have to be on my own. And you know, you don't have to be on your own in this Christian life. You don't have to live your life here on earth without this awesome, amazing helper, the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, there's things that he can do. He can show you uh, trouble that's about to come. Now, there's a, there's a Bible uh, story. It's in the book of Acts. If you have a Bible, you can turn and look at it. If you don't, just listen to this, this story. Uh, the Apostle Paul, he was taken prisoner for his faith. And he had been in prison and out of prison, and he was uh, taken before uh, Augustus or Felix, and he was taken before different, um, you know, governors, and they were all here in this case. And the Jews were trying to get this guy killed because <laughs> he was preaching Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, and they just thought Jesus wasn't the one. Their eyes were blinded in part, as the Scripture says, and so. Paul had purchased a, a Roman citizenship many years before when he was younger, and uh, he said, I appeal to Caesar. And so he was taken as a prisoner to go to Rome. But before they were about to take off, the Bible says that, that Paul said, I perceived, and he went to the, to the captain of the ship, and he said, I perceive that this voyage we're about to take is going to be hurtful, and there's going to be a lot of damage. But... You know, the scripture says there that uh, these men, you know, they're, they're seamen, they're, they're, they're watching the wind, they're watching the waves, they're watching what's going on. It said when the south wind blew softly, they supposed they'd gained their purpose, so they took off. But Paul spoke by revelation. He said, I perceive. That means to have before the event knowledge or an understanding. Now again, realize the scripture, Jesus already said, this was years before. Now at this point, you know, Jesus has been raised from the dead. He has come and gone. And here's the Apostle Paul. He's a believer. He's walking with God and he's in tune to the Holy Ghost. And he said, I perceive. Something on the inside of him was telling him this is going to be a bad trip. And he was sure of it enough that he went to the captain of the ship and said, I don't think you guys want to take off right now. Uh, I perceive that this trip is going to be with a lot of hurt and a lot of damage, not only of the things on the ship, but also of our lives. But they didn't listen to him. And if you go on, the scripture says that uh, they weren't, you know, too far out, too many days. And it said that all hope that their lives should be saved was taken away. They hadn't seen the sun or the stars, the scripture said, in many days. This is in the 27th chapter of the book of Acts. They hadn't seen the sun or stars in many days and all hope that they should be saved, Paul said, it was then taken away. And so, you know, Paul was went down to the bottom of the ship and he was down in there. I believe he was probably praying, tuning in, and the Bible says that an angel appeared to him. And he said, Paul, don't be afraid. He said, God has given you all that sail with you. You've got to appear before Caesar, and you're going to Rome. So he went up on the top of the deck, and he said, listen, you guys, uh, everybody's been fasting. Nobody's eating. You know, these guys were praying to whatever God they thought they knew, uh, and, and maybe there was some that were praying to the God of heaven. But uh, Paul said, an angel stood by me tonight and he said, I, he said this, he said, listen to me, sirs. He said, I believe God that it will be even as it was told me. There will be no man's life will be lost. Not a hair from your head will fall. And he said to him, now eat some food and be of good cheer. We're going to be all right. In the process of time, they came between two seas. The ship was broken. They all jumped on pieces of board came to a certain island and the native people took them in took care of them and they were fed in fact paul ended up praying for the for the governor of the island uh, the guy had some kind of bad disease the guy was healed by the power of god and then later on they were able to get another ship and continue on their journey see paul knew all that stuff was going to happen ahead of time and the reason they were spared all those men's lives were spared even though they disobeyed what Paul said. It was because Paul was on a mission for God and Paul was a believer. Paul said, don't do it. They did it anyway. And because he was a prisoner, he didn't have a choice. But he did tell them, this is going to be a bad deal, you guys. And they didn't listen. 
Now, afterwards, he said, you should have listened to me <laughs> and not to have loosed out from the island of Crete. But they did. You know, the Spirit of God showed me something. Uh, I felt like I ought to share this tonight. Many years ago, I was in a, in a certain town in the state of Missouri, and I was out with a pastor, and we, we were out just, uh, there's some people in the car, and we were talking, and actually, we were just kind of laughing and carrying on, but just in a little bit, I had this urge to pray, and uh, kind of silently on the inside while the others were talking, I was praying, and finally, I, it just got so strong, I said to him, I just turned to him, I said, we need to pray, we just need to pray. And, of course, they looked at me kind of strange, like, you know, we've been having this big fun time, we're laughing, we're carrying on, and you're saying we need to pray. Well, they said, all right. So we started praying, and I was driving on my way out of town. Something was drawing me to go that way. I just had something on the inside that I needed to go up toward the edge of town. So I went up that way, drove up a little ways, and I just had this thought, turn around. And I came back around, and when I turned around, I got back up onto the, uh, just coming into town and, and uh, prayed a little bit more and moved over, over to this other ramp to go back up onto this highway, and I just had the strongest urge to go up there. I, I just thought, something is wrong, like somebody's life's in danger. And as I got up off the exit ramp, or the entrance ramp, I guess it would be, onto, the hi onto that highway, I looked back to my left check in traffic and there was a car that had just wrecked into the guardrails now this was an overpass would have had you know quite a drop to the bottom and here was this car that was just smashed up and it was the only car there it wasn't there a few minutes before because we had driven uh, by that area and there was nothing there but God was alerting me that something was about to happen we went over to the car when I got there, the roof was caved down in. The guy was sitting there behind the steering wheel. There was blood in his mouth. His eyes were just, you know, it looked almost like nobody was home. Uh, but I, you could see he's, you know, he's breathing. He's still alive. But man, he's hurt. He's just messed up. So I climbed over through the wreckage. I got up to him. The doors were crinkled. You couldn't open the doors. Uh, the windshield was busted out. And I knew in an instant why I was there. I needed to tell him about Jesus Christ, to receive him as Lord and Savior. And I looked at him and I said, if you can hear me, if you can understand me, just blink your eyes. And his eyes moved. He blinked. And I said, you need to receive Jesus Christ right now. I knew this guy was so messed up, he probably wasn't going to live through this, this wreck that he had been in. He, it didn't look good. And I said to him, Jesus Christ died for you, paid the penalty of your sins and mine, and you need to receive him into your life right now. And I told him, just on the inside of you, say, Jesus, come into my life, be my Lord, be my Savior. And I said to him, if you understood me and you did that, I'm asking you to blink at me. And he just barely, I just barely saw an eye twitch. Moments later, I think a police car had come, an ambulance had showed up, someone else had, had obviously seen that gone by, and uh, they came in and they had those jaws light, they cut the thing out, well, I found out, I was in town doing meetings and I found out uh, within a couple of days that guy didn't make it. But I can tell you this, I'm just as sure as I know my name, that guy had someone praying for him. Somebody was praying that he would receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and in his case uh, man it was just seconds before he died but an amazing thing God got my attention God sent somebody to this guy just in the nick of time just barely in time but he heard the gospel message and he acknowledged with the eye blink that he heard me and that he responded and you know that that's that's a story that you know I can I can see it every time I tell it I can see the guy's face I can see the accident site and uh, I'm I'm 53 years old right now and that happened when I was about 26 but uh, that was just an incredible event that took place and I could talk about a lot of them but you know 
the Spirit of God, as the Scripture said, He will show you things to come. I've had many times where he's, he's told me, don't go this way, don't travel that route, don't do this, and just gotten me clear of trouble and clear of, of bad things happening. And the Spirit of God will do that for you. He's also shown me good things to come and things that were about to come to pass, and they came to pass. And it's just awesome to walk with God and to know the Spirit of God and to recognize when He's trying to communicate with your spirit to show you something, to teach you something. When you're sitting down reading the Word of God and you're saying, God, I don't understand this. Help help me understand this. And He will open the eyes of your understanding and He will cause you to see. You know, one of the other things I think is is absolutely incredible, you know. (laughs) We have day timers in this day and age to remember... Um, you know, schedules, uh, appointments that we have, places we need to go, places we need to be, um, you know, all kind of things. Maybe things we do uh, have set up months in advance. I know some people, you know, they have things set up a year in advance. I, I don't have too many things like that, but people have things far in advance, and sometimes you just don't, you don't remember everything. But you know, more importantly even than that is God's Word. When the tests and trials of life come, when the storms are blowing against your life, you definitely want to remember what did God say about this situation? What did God say I should do? What should I know right now? And Jesus said that the spirit of truth, when he was come, he said, Jesus said that he would bring all things to your remembrance. Now that's an amazing thing. He said, all things that I have said in you, he would bring it to your remembrance. The Spirit of God would take the things that God has said to us, and of course, his written word is there, but when we read that and we've we've meditated on that and we've talked to the Lord about his word, sometime later down the road, suddenly I need that word. I need what it says. And the scripture says that the Spirit of God will bring it to our remembrance. Maybe you can relate to this. I've had times when, uh, you know, there was just difficult things going on in life. Really rough. You know, they were rough waters. And uh, the Bible says in Psalm 32 and verse 7, I'll read this. He says, You are my hiding place, and you shall preserve me from trouble. And you shall surround me with songs of deliverance. I've gone to bed at night and had songs that that are just full of the Word of God, just playing in my mind. But they weren't just any song. They were songs that were encouraging me and strengthening me in the midst of this storm that I was in. I've gotten up in the day and just had a, you know, my mind was, was caught up in the problem but it was like there was this other recorder going on on the inside of me and it just kept playing this song over and over and over and I was thinking, Lord, what should I do? And all of a sudden it was like, hello, listen to that song. Listen to what's going on on the inside of you. And I thought about the words and thought about what it was saying. And then I realized, my gosh, God's given me my answer right here. And that's just one of the ways that the Spirit of God will bring the Word of God to your remembrance. He may bring a scripture to your remembrance. He may bring, um, you know, a whole verse, or maybe he'll bring a couple of scriptures, something to guide you, to bring you into a place where you're going to be strengthened, you're going to be enlightened, you're going to know what to do. Or he may do it through song. You know, I've even had times where uh, driving down the road, and there was a billboard, and it had some message about something about the Lord. And just at the right time, I just looked up and saw it. Didn't even know it was there. Just looked up and there it was. And it was like, wow, God is just reaching out to me today. And He is trying to communicate with me and help me through the situation that I'm in. And that's what the Spirit of God will do. You know, it's very important though, if you're going to enjoy this type of life, you have to learn to recognize how the Spirit of God works with you. I want to read to you just a couple of scriptures if you're watching this, or if you have a Bible, you can turn to this. But listen to this. Uh, again, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. This is a Weymouth translation. It says, Do you not know that you are God's sanctuary and that the Spirit of God has His home within you? 
And now we quoted this earlier, Romans chapter uh, 8 and verse 14, it says, For as many as are led or guided by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27 says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. He's simply saying that God uses man's spirit just like you would a, you use a candle or a light today. You know, maybe if the power goes out, you light a candle. You're doing it to light your way so you can see where you're going because you don't want to trip and fall over furniture, different things, or wherever you might be, you're using it, or you have a flashlight at night. You're using it to guide your path. And God is saying in this scripture here, that the spirit of man is what he uses to guide him. He speaks through the Holy Spirit to your spirit. And again, the scripture says, don't you know that you're the temple of the living God and the spirit of God dwells in you? Well, the spirit of God's on the inside of you because he wants to enlighten you. Then Psalms chapter 18 and verse 28, he said, for you will light my candle. The Lord, my God will enlighten my darkness. Now, again, don't think that God's just going to do this for some special Christian or some special believer or the preachers or you know, Bible school graduates. No, God is going to do this for everyone who is a child of His, a son, a daughter of God. God will do this for you. Why? Because He already put the Spirit of God on the inside of you when you were born again. When you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the Spirit of God immediately comes on the inside of you. And that is the very first thing, the very first initial thing that takes place on the inside of you is that the Spirit of God comes in and in the same instant the Bible says that we are made uh, a new creation in Christ. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 said if any man is in Christ he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold all things are become new. And so the Spirit of God dwells on the inside of us and God's using your spirit to speak to you, speak into your life. Then Jeremiah chapter uh, 33 and verse 3 God said this, listen to this, he said, call to me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. You know, sometimes maybe you've heard people say, well, you know, God doesn't always answer. Uh, that's not, a, that's not in the Bible. It's not scriptural. They, they can't uh, support that. Scripturally, they can't. And I, like I say, if God doesn't say it, then don't you believe it. If God's word doesn't teach it, then don't you believe it. God's word says, call to me and I will answer you. And that doesn't mean some happy day. No, he says, you call out and I'll answer you. You know, sometimes people say, well, I've called out to the Lord. He didn't answer me. Uh, he did answer you. You just didn't recognize. And the way that that's going to come is you're going to have to spend time, talk to the Lord, but then don't keep doing all the talking. You're going to have to be quiet. You're going to have to sit still. Uh, you know, the prophet of old said, I will sit, I will wait and see what, what the Lord, what he will say to me. And so you got to sit still. you got to get quiet and look to the inside, in your spirit. The Bible says, you know, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. He's not speaking to your head. God's not a mind. He's a spirit. Uh, a, and, and we're a spirit being according to scripture we're made in his image and likeness and so God is going to speak to your spirit and he's going to do it by the Holy Spirit he's not going to speak to your head he's not going to write it on the wall yes God might use some outward things if he can't get through to you but listen he's given you a great treasure it's called the indwelling Holy Spirit of God hey hope you enjoyed this tonight I hope this helped you listen Take some time, not only just to read God's Word, but take time to talk to God. Whatever's going on in your life, sit down and spend time with Him. Now, I want to pray for you before we close. If you're watching this and you're just saying, you know, i just kind of been struggling a little bit, and I, sometimes I believe God's speaking to me, other times I'm just not sure what's going on. I'm just going to pray that God will help you to recognize how the Spirit of God is working within you. So right now, uh, I'm just reaching out to you. I'm going to pray for you. You receive this. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for everyone that watches this. They're watching it live or maybe they're watching this uh, 
at a later date, Lord, in the archived videos. And so I just thank you right now, Lord, whenever they're watching this, whoever's watching this, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that those who have been born again will have a heightened awareness uh, by, by the revelation of the Spirit of God of when the Holy Spirit is talking to them or speaking to their heart or communicating with them, trying to show them something, trying to communicate something to them. I pray that you would just help them to recognize when you're trying to minister to them, when you're trying to speak into their life, when you're trying to communicate or show them something to come. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you're watching this and you say, well, I, I don't know God, I'm, I'm not saved. Well, you can be right now. Right now, the Bible says, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, the Bible says that with the heart, man believes to a right standing with God, and, and with the mouth, a confession is made to salvation. The scripture says that if you believe in your heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, that he's, he's paid the sin for you, paid the penalty price for your sins, and raised him from the dead. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, the scripture says, you shall be saved. The Bible says that whoever, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it doesn't matter where you are. I don't care if you're in a bar watching this. I don't care if you're doing drugs watching this. You're backslid watching this. It doesn't matter what kind of lifestyle you're in. I don't care if you're a prostitute. don't care if you're gay. don't care what's going on in your life. God loves you. God cares about you. It doesn't matter how big of a wreck you think you've made of life or how many times you've cursed his name. God is a merciful God. He's a loving God. And right now, you need to ask him into your heart. Just say this with me as I pray. Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart come into my life, be my Lord, and be my Savior. I accept you right now, and I thank you for receiving me. Now, if you prayed that prayer, the Bible said, whoever calls on his name would be saved, then I can say to you, welcome to the family of God. Right there on the screen, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, it does have a link on my videos at the end. Uh, uh, of Gospel Flight Ministries. You can just type in gfmi.us contact us and tell us that you got saved. If you're there on the on the site already, we well, can see it at the top of the homepage. Hey, thanks for joining us tonight for Straight Talk.